Hey, this is LJ from 7 Dust, and you're watching Good Company. Hey guys, my name is Scott Bowling, and you're watching Good Company. Today I'm with Lejean Witherspoon. Lejean is the lead singer of Seven Dust. Seven Dust is working on their 11th studio record. They literally, he's literally left the studio right now to be here, man. So, thank you for being here, brother. Thank you, it's a pleasure. <laughs> right, it's, uh, I've been excited about doing this uh, since we talked about it. Last night at around 12 o'clock, I finished my last vocals, and I knew the first thing that I was gonna be able to do is to fly to Atlanta to be here with you guys in good company. And uh, I'll tell you what, I, I didn't know what to expect other than seeing the pictures. And if you ain't been here, you need to come. That's what I'm saying. This is uh, <laughs> this is uh, amazing. This is a musical place and a great energy, man. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Um, so before we go back into Seven Dust, I kind of want to talk about uh, Body and Soul. Sure. Um, how did you form that? I mean, nobody ever talks about Body and Soul. No, no one. Let me uh, get the, the low on that. Wow, this is a great question. <laughs> I actually just recently, uh, got back in touch with my drummer Todd Granoff. Uh that was one of the reasons I was in Body and Soul and Lee Banks wow. and Chris Banks. I don't know you might know those guys they're mm -hmm. from here in Atlanta. Uh, great artist. Very young, out of high school. They met and we met and they uh, thought I had a good voice and we worked at Hardy's together <laughs> as young men and I remember them bringing in uh, Guns N' Roses and all this type of music that they wanted me. Oh man, Living Color's cool too. Yeah. We should do a band. And I was already in the music industry uh, in my own mind, you know, just I wanted to be a singer. And we put a band together, Body and Soul. And for whatever reason in Atlanta, I never thought that we'd have been opening up for like Mother's Finest. Oh yeah. But these kids uh, that I work with, I, I think that was definitely the seed that started mm -hmm. what has become now. And without those guys, I would have never probably even met Morgan, Vinny, John, or Clint if I wouldn't have met the guys in Body and Soul. Would you ever do like Body and Soul like reunion or? I mean, we need like Body and yeah, Soul. Yeah, it would like, be weird. Album or something. That would be awesome YouTube. though. I've never, no one's ever said that. That would be <laughs> very cool, man, because we used to bring it. Even though I do remember one night that I got my first tattoo and I remember trying to hide it from my mother and my dad knew <laughs> that I had the tattoo. And we were at the International Ballroom, mm, yeah, and they it used walked to be hot up, in there. They walked up to the stage, and my dad said, "Your mom's gonna kill you." <laughs> in in the show, and I remember, man, it was just you know just so many things, memories that I had with that group, from opening up for Mother's Finest, from playing the Rec Room, and then going to the International Ballroom on New Year's, doing two shows. Mm. You know what I mean? Things yeah. like that. And uh, I I can't remember exactly the school that we played that Lee Banks' mother worked at, but I remember Larry Blackman's son went to the school mm -hmm. and we played a talent show. <laughs> uh, it's a private school, so that's where all the kids <laughs> had money at at the time. Anyway, but I remember playing the talent show with Body and Soul and Larry uh. Blackman from Cameo being right there in the front because his son went to the school and I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it one day. And I got to meet him and said, man, <laughs> how much of a pleasure it was to meet him back then with these kids that got me into this rock uh, avenue. Yeah, so I always cool. wanted to do it, but I think, yeah, Lee Banks and uh, and Todd Granoff and Kate. Did Lewis. you guys have merch and like, out, like could people Bodies, purchase your I stuff? Never, no, no, I don't think we maybe made it as far as merch, but we made it as far as playing the rec room, international ballroom, and doing <laughs> shows, and people knew us. Yeah. We were like a, a, a cool band, you know? Is like, that how you hooked up with Snake Nation? Is that how the no, whole No, 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 I used to go see Snake Nation mm. uh, at the International Ballroom. I, I remember going to see Morgan and Benny and hanging out and saying, man, I'm gonna jam with you guys one day. <laughs> and years later, I worked at a place called Hot Rocks in Georgia, Cobb County, and uh, my band body, and so I think we kind of pretty much kind of stopped and. A couple of us were playing on Monday nights, just acoustic and mm -hmm. jamming up. No, no more than acoustic, acoustic and jamming and playing covers and some of our songs. And one night, Morgan Rose, Benny Hornsby, and John Conley walked into Hot Rocks. 
I went to a place that had the hot rock and you cooked the food. It was a Jamaican place. That's so cool. I yeah. was a host because they figured out I couldn't cook. <laughs> I was only an art. I was only a musician. That's all I said. I don't know what I'm doing here, but they're like, yeah, that's what you do. So you just welcome the people in. And this one night they came in and I remember Morgan sitting down and saying, man, we want to be in a band with you. For me as a kid, I was like, oh my God, these are, these are the guys that I've you know watched like. Vinny and these guys in Snake Nation, I'm like, wow, this is Morgan, you're an incredible drummer. Vinny, uh, incredible. And John at the time had been in the Peace Dogs. And he's playing drums, right? Yeah, drums. Yeah. When we first got together, John didn't have a guitar strap. <laughs> and so all of a sudden, they're like, hey, let's jam. We went to the rec room, and uh, Lee Banks at the time was our guitar player, which was from Body and Soul. Oh, yeah, cool. And man, we were at the rec room, and we did uh, a song called Crazy, mm -hmm. which was an old body and soul song that we kind of reformed and then the song black that john wrote but then mm. we you know changed it around and wrote black to the music and we had two songs and we were like this is a sound that i had for me i was so proud of that i'd never heard before and we were so excited about it we went to charlie mcgruder's i think maybe two weeks later and played those songs back to back twice because we were a band now we were like yeah. we're here so we, Lee Banks was in your group? Yeah, he was right in the band. Oh, yeah. wow. Lee okay. Banks was in. Yeah, he was in the band. Uh, I, oh. We hadn't been called Seven Dust yet, but Lee mm. Banks was actually the first okay. guitar player that we had until we brought Clint in, mm. which was an incredible thing for us to bring Clint in because we were all fans of Steel Rain and everything that he had done. And you guys brought Clint in. Was that at the Masquerade? Was that your first show? or what, what? I believe so. I think that was the first show that... Uh, a family member dropped some beer <laughs> in his amp, and it was yes, like, yeah, it, yeah. Bullhead Clap was opening. Yeah, up <laughs> but yeah, Clint for me, man, it was so cool because he was like this outside energy that already loved Morgan and Benny and everyone in the band, and then yeah. Clint was in Steel Rain, which if you went to a Steel Rain concert, you knew <laughs> it was going to be on. I mean, oh, really? It was also, you know, I mean, all the girls were there. They were grit looking guys. The music sounded great, and it was a. It, it was a it was a great energy to me that time is like a time that you know like you had the bands like uh nirvana soundgarden and stuff like that mm -hmm. in whatever area they were in maybe it's seattle yeah whatever. so that for me was that those were my guys like mm -hmm. i'm like wow this is what's going to be the next big thing so to yeah. be able to play with those guys and to form a band I was really excited about it. That's awesome. Yeah, I couldn't and, believe it. That's being young too. I remember doing my first shot at Charlie McGruder's. Oh, really? Yeah, 21 years old, and I ran to the bathroom and threw up after I did a shot of gold slaughter. <laughs> oh. I remember that, and I was like, "Wow, this is this is what rock and roll." So is. when you were, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I like it. No, I'm How did you tell your guys from Body and Soul? You're like, I gotta, I gotta well, do this already, thing now. We'd already kind of broken up and. Mm -hmm kind of going our ways and we're doing our things and like I said that night that Morgan and them were there it was just me and my drummer and my guitar player just kind of wow jamming not as a band just mm -hmm. as brothers and they said we want to jam with you man and, and it happened and I still can't believe to this day that we've been going for this long mm. yeah that's uh, you guys are over 20 years now man I'm very blessed so your first album was uh this one wow yeah. talk about the cover what's going on with that all right so Sean is on the cover of this, but my, one of my best buddies was Brian Shippey, who was a photographer back in the day. And he was like, man, it'd be really cool. I'm gonna take the pictures and we're gonna go, but I don't know if we should talk about this, but I am, I'm 45 years old and I can't. Sean <laughs> would look really crazy when he would smoke and get high. <laughs> Weed, that is. And so this is actually him smoking a joint or a bowl or something, but he would look so weird after he would do it. Shippey's like, man, we're gonna make him look even crazier <laughs> on this picture and so it was fun and I remember going into uh art institute of no 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 what was it uh where we used to rehearse at I want to think about it you kind of added this break one. room do you guys no not the rec room, break room. No, rec this room. is where Kenny no, room. and Cha uh Chaney and him used to uh it was down uh, it was right there by what's the the beer brewery here uh yes I know what you're saying um RTM yes sorry edit Come back. So <laughs> at RTM, we brought him down here, and we were actually we had the uh, the, the same room that the Black Crows used to rehearse oh, in. Oh, cool! So it's a lot of stories and like follow for now. I you know when we talked about follow for now, that's mm -hmm. where I got my. Still have my wardrobe case that follow for now used to have. Uh, and so yeah, Sean came in. We took about an hour or two, got him as high as he could could be, <laughs> and took this picture, and this ended up being the cover of the album. And it was a lot of weird stuff with that album. 
uh, on the back side of this album, if you notice. Yeah, we got it right here. Oh my God! Look at that. There Boom. it is. That picture right there. We were trying to be creative. He's like, man, it'd be cool if we made it look like you wrote a poster on the wall, which it never. <laughs> Technology wasn't as good back then to have the, the dreams that we thought, but we were already before our time is what I felt. <laughs> so that was supposed to be me on a poster. Oh, but I it, never yeah, got that. That's yeah, funny. you never got it. Yeah, we got it. No one else did. We could see it. Maybe it's because we were doing that right there. But oh, no, there you go. You know, man, we were so young, and I remember that. That was... Masquerades, the original Excelsior Mule, and the upstairs. Who's this guy right here, man? That's Vinny. That's Vinny right yeah, there. That's Vinny. We're he looks like he's young. in Biohazard yeah. or something. <laughs> like, that hat, yeah, that, because he has a bandana on too. Yeah. Up under the hat, yeah. <laughs> Look at Morgan's hair; it was weird. Yeah, and Clint Drinking, looks really uncomfortable right deceiving, there. Deceiving, drinking water. Yeah, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, wow, Clint was young. We were all so young. Look at John. He looks like he's right yeah. out of Georgia Tech. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That was crazy. Oh, yeah, this, what a great time. And you're on man. a poster. That's and, good. And then I look up and I see J.J. French. Yeah, from uh, Twisted Sister. Yeah. So uh, what was that like, man, working with J.J. French? And Mark Mendoza. Nice. Uh, J.J. was, man, you know what? J.J. was great. It was uh, very cool for us to... To have someone that was in a band like Twisted Sister mm -hmm. be engaged in Seven Dust because that was just like wow that maybe something's really cool. JJ came in and and I think he he helped us a lot, man. He mm -hmm. uh, he helped us, you know. He put us, he got us a lot of things that I think set the platform to where we're at now at the beginning because mm -hmm. not a lot of people had a manager like Twisted Sister guitar player. Yeah, and uh, it, it it was a learning experience, you know. I, I thank JJ for being a part of our lives and, uh, you know, helping us get to where we're at now. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's cool. But it was a weird experience. We uh, recorded at Triclops Studio, if you remember that place. Mm. You remember Triclops? It was here in Atlanta <laughs> years and years ago. Uh, and I remember we did not do the uh, Olympic show that the stage blew up because mm -hmm. we were recording our first album. But we were supposed to be on that stage that the bomb went off on. Oh, wow, well, yeah, the yeah, Olympics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's when that yeah, was there when the this day album before. Was being done. Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. Never knew that. And we got signed. I'll tell you how we got signed. We got the rec room, and they came in. I don't know if it was like a Gavin convention or whatever, where they come in and sign bands mm -hmm. that play at the different spots. And the, the radio, the, the labels back then, when they really came out and signed bands, they thought the rec room was a strip club. <laughs> and uh, these two people, Sudi and Sean, came in and saw us and they said they were blown away and I remember meeting them that night and they were like oh man this is crazy we <laughs> we work for TVT Records man here's our card we would love to work with you guys record deal really <laughs> like this is what you want to talk about and yeah. it took a year for us to go through that to actually get to the point to where we started talking to them seriously and like like this is we're really gonna sign a record deal and uh yeah Atlanta and this whole experience changed my life man yeah you know it's been a lot of I say a lot of good times and a lot of nightmares, but I think that goes along with the music industry, and uh, this uh, this means a lot. I talked to uh, uh, Clint a little bit about this, how TV, TVT um, kind of rented out a, a space on TV for that little oh, yeah, live and the, loud, the you know? Yes, the infomercial. That's wild. That's that you call it a commercial. <laughs> like yeah, it's, it was it's like amazing. How many minutes was it? Like a it was three, probably over an hour, right? Yeah, it was. And I thought, you know, I remember one night after it all was said and done, actually seeing that and being like, oh my god, this is. Awesome from uh, yeah. the, EP, the EPK, whatever we did, the video in uh, the Metro in uh, Chicago, mm. and kind of telling our story. I think the band should, you know, especially with the way the industry is now and the social media, those that was a great idea. Oh, wow, skin that's your second one. Oh, we did that in Germany, I remember that. Uh, so yeah, I thought that was a great thing. It was a, a very Cool point. I remember my dad's friends and my parents' friends saying, oh my God, I was up at one o'clock in the morning and saw an infomercial about seven dust. <laughs> and it helped. I yeah. mean, it, it put us on the map. People, you know, that normally would not come to a show, they were able to see us on their television. I remember night. buying that on VHS. Did, were you guys selling that as a product or were you just saying, hey, we're selling Oh no, dust? That, that was just, that was just like, a commercial that oh, our wow. label put out, yeah. That's insane. That was incredible. And Steve Gottlieb, I'm going to tell you what, the owner of TVT Records, man, he's the reason that we were on the map. He's the reason we had those gold albums is because he was he was doing that, you know, mm -hmm. at the time. That was what his thing was. And I thank them for bringing us into this industry and letting us kind of take the reins after they 
brought us into it, man. I mean, it was. I wonder if that's ever time. been done with any other artist. Maybe you know? I don't know, but man, it was weird to work. watching Channel Seventeen is what I like to call it. Still. Yeah. <laughs> and all of a sudden, after things go off, it was a Seven <laughs> Dust <laughs> commercial, <laughs> man. We're like rocking out like at two o'clock in the morning, and, and it was really cool. And I, I would cool. love to do something like that again in the future, man. What, what a a good time for us, and I think that a lot of people got to see that. That, like I said, wouldn't right. wouldn't come out to a show or wouldn't even be interested in the band because where would they see it at yeah you know so your second album is home and you guys were um talk about home you guys were rushed on that album right you, you mean you, you guys only had about about a month yes is that right to record Toby right oh wow this is uh so this was done in uh north brookfield massachusetts at the farm this was Chino. It was Chino on this? Yeah. Chino was. So we, skin was on there. Yeah, too. we ended up moving into this big farmhouse where Jethro Tull, uh, the Rolling Stones, <laughs> and everyone had done albums at, and we all had our own room. The house was haunted. We knew about that, which was a little weird. <laughs> but we were in there, and that was a real weird time in our our careers. We were just young and just ready to do music, and to work with Toby Wright was an incredible thing too. But. Uh, we had a, we had a lot of good experience here. We uh, partied on this album too. <laughs> this was like a pressure though, wasn't it? When you guys like, I yeah, mean, I, 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 it was it was pressure like, slash party. I think, <laughs> I think it was pressure, but I think we were still so young and excited mm -hmm. that the music still came out. I mean, I think that's what uh, I think you have to go through different stages to get to where you get to here. No, absolutely. So this is you know this is one of those stages where we were young and just. What made you guys decide? Because you have. Chino and another guest, yeah, well, um, Skin. Skin. How, yeah. All right. So, skin, right there. All right. So at this time, Planned. we had just met Skunk and Nancy, and didn't realize that they were the they were like Michael Jackson overseas. <laughs> you know, we had seen them come over here and couldn't believe them when they went out on tour with us. That people didn't understand who they were, but when we they took us over there, it was people standing in line for three or four days wow. to see Skunk and Nancy, and then you realize, wow, this is something that is you know this is bigger. And Skin flew in from Japan and came in and wrote Licking Cream in my room with me. Oh, and I remember her being like, I'm in, you know, her accent, I love it. I'm in this writing mode and I, I really feel like, uh, and she sat down with me and listened to the song and made her back. She's like, and singing to me. Mm -hmm. She's like, well, I've been, I'm in that mode. She was in the zone. So that song went down and like, was she helping you write the chorus, or was she going we, to the verses? We were and doing the verses together. Oh, wow. And then we kind of wrote the song together, and she's like, let's go do it. Mm. And went in there, and t t t to this day, still, she's probably one of the, the coolest people I've seen work, and to have that perfection of just, she went in and one so take. So knocked it out. One take kind of thing. Like I was like, wow. So uh, that when was you, cool. When you were working with Chino, is, but was it opposite of that? Because no, he was there, Chino <laughs> he was there was, for a while. No, Chino no. was great. You know what, man? I don't know if I, I could say this, but I wonder if we had anything to do with the White Pony album. It was right before. Yeah. Was it right before or after? Oh, it was right before. This was in 98, right? Oh, so he was already... White with... Pony was in 2000. Oh, well, that's weird. Yeah. Because he got to ride a horse at the farm. <laughs> so that was yeah. white. But I'd never seen him on a horse before. Maybe that got him to White Pony. I don't know. So that's what I was about. <laughs> I've never got to ask him that, but I've always wondered that. But Chino was cool because, uh, I st like to this day, I still love him. But to see him working to come in and that, uh, that element, and I thought the song... It was weird, but I still think it's one of my favorite songs because his, I love it. his voice is on it, and it, 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 it felt good. It didn't mm -hmm. fit right, but to see him work was a cool thing for us because yeah. he worked different from us. He kind of went into the studio, and I don't necessarily think that he had lyrics at the time, but he did a melody, mm -hmm. and that was his melody, and then he went and wrote lyrics and came back, so it was it was fun just for us to have the Deftones. Chino, I still yeah. can't believe that we, until That's you so talk cool. about it that... We did that, you yeah. Know? And, and why does it last on the album? That's weird. It's just it maybe gets it closes the album. Yeah, out. It's because done. maybe how can you the, top the it? last thing that you know was mm -hmm. happening at that time? And me and Chino have never talked about that again. Really? I remember seeing him at uh, AfterShock, mm -hmm. and you know, next time I do see him, I want to ask him about that. Like, you didn't talk about recording no, together? Or never, nothing? never, ever since it happened. Wow. Uh, so you know, things like that are to me. I don't know. That makes it even uh, more nostalgic for me. To you know, to know that we At least did you that got it on film too. Yeah, we got it on film. Like yeah. seeing that, I've never seen that before. Yeah, I've never, you know, I've never seen that part of Chino on that. So it's really cool it's to come rare. back now 
And, you know, I would love to ask him, man, what was that like for you? Because for me, it was a dream come true mm -hmm. to even, I mean, anything, all these things for me are a dream come true. Why, okay. Last question on this. Why wasn't Licking Cream, uh, the one you did with the skin, why was that released on video here? I you know, know what? Weird. I'll it tell was... you why. Because we did it in Germany. And I remember doing the video for MTV over there. And they were like, oh, we can't have the red blood running through yeah, the tubes. Through the tubes yeah. So they made it black. And I don't know if that was something that was back then that would have to be, you know, I don't know, politically correct. Mm -hmm. But I thought that video would have been great over here. But yeah. it, did, it did well over there in Germany and overseas. But, you know, people still ask for that song. <laughs> At least it did get somewhere. Yeah, it did. Yeah, it was it's over there. Was, too. And I remember uh, doing that video. It was a cold, broke down place. And it was so fun to be there with skin and knowing how big they were over there. And seven of us were doing a video <laughs> in Munich, Germany. Like, who, you know what I mean? Like, You're for right. us, like, what are we doing? You know, like, have we made it? I'm broke, but have we made it? <laughs> you know what I mean? What a, what a pleasure. You can't, you can't, you can never take those kind of things back. And was this before uh, Woodstock 99? Because that was your biggest, I mean, that's your biggest show, right? Well, How do you beat nah, Woodstock 99? That's Woods, huge. That was huge. It, you know, I, I think there's definitely been bigger shows, but Woodstock 99 was definitely probably one of the most memorable moments of my life to hear Jewel yeah. singing. Up on the hill. On the hill. She was like, <laughs> She was yodeling. It sounded beautiful, <laughs> which I love her. I think she's beautiful and she's a great artist. But I remember screaming something, seven dozen has arrived or something <laughs> in black or something started. And all I remember is seeing that hill at Woodstock and all of a sudden, I've never seen so many kids run over a hill down <laughs> to the pit, to the area we're in. It was overwhelming and scary. So cool. At the same time, that day I hung out with Willie Nelson on his tour bus, wow. which was an awesome feat. What did you guys do on the tour bus? <laughs> I'm just like... <laughs> I talked about how cool the paintings, the mural on the outside. Was, no, it was awesome. Willie Nelson was great. It was a very good experience. Uh, I also remember that night, I'll tell you a true story. Red Hot Chili Peppers were playing. Oh, yeah. And like, hey, they had got... the big lights on their heads, right? No, they Is were naked. The they oh, had they're socks naked. on. Oh, yeah. I remember being like, oh, right. okay, you're right. It's like the Rolling Stone magazine. They yeah, yeah. actually were like playing with the socks. <laughs> right. And all of a sudden, the water tanks or whatever they were on that field, everyone was complaining about how much the water was costing. Mm. And it was a costing a lot, you know, for a $6 bottle of water. And everyone was kind of upset. Been there all day long, however, however many days. <laughs> we're watching the Red Hot Chili Peppers, and one of the water tanks catches a they set it on fire and you hear something boom, wow. and then something else is on fire. And these people are burning the place down now. They're like partying and still having a good time. And I remember being on the stage watching the Chili Peppers. They're like, all the artists has got to get out, get out. You got to get to your tour buses. And for me, it was like almost famous as a kid. Like, oh my God, this is great. You know, we're hiding on the bus. They're like, get down. They're trying to get you guys. We're like, no, they're not. Why are you kicking us out of here? But we're on our tour bus leaving. And hiding, and they're like, you know, they're blowing everything up, which they were just, you know, yeah. I guess sh sharing their emotions about, man, we've been paying, I don't have any more money, I bought one water and a burrito, and that was That's, $26. It's weird to say the water was on fire. We had, so they, <laughs> there was a water tank that they yeah. burned up, and I remember seeing it from the stage, man, and uh, getting out, but that was... Was that the Bill Limp Biscuit was on? Because didn't they start like a big ride? Maybe so, yeah. yeah. Like, maybe that's what started it all up, but I just mm -hmm. remember being on that stage with... Uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers and being kicked off and escorted to our bus and heading out of New York. That's awesome. And we were like, yeah, <laughs> we did this. You know, what? You know, so many stories like that. that and Corn was on that building. Yeah, too, yeah. Right? That's really Everybody. Cool. I remember getting there because we barely made it. I think we were coming from Canada. And we got there that day and walked the grounds and like, we're really going to play this Woodstock thing. Man. Oh, that's cool. It yeah. was pretty amazing, man, to, to be a part of that. Woodstock 99, uh, we still say that to this day. We got a joke with one of my old drum techs, Reagan, mm -hmm. that was recently working with Lady Gaga. He's like, uh, we can still go to a place right now. He's like, you know who this is? Woodstock 99. <laughs> no one cares, but it's our joke. You know? <laughs> Dude, so after that, you had um, Animosity, which yeah. is, I would say, by far my favorite well, thank Seven you. Guess album. who this kid is? Who is that? Guy? Mark Tremonti's cousin. No way. Yeah, that's very odd, huh? How did he make the cover? Well, because we were friends with those guys, and we were in uh, Orlando doing this, and the, the photo shoot came around, and it just kind of we were family with the Creed mm -hmm. guys, and Mark Tremonti's been family ever since. That's so cool. Yeah, this album was great. We lived in Orlando, in a place called um, Metro West, 
And but this was with Ben. Yeah, Ben Gross. And we had a great time doing this album. Xmas Day, one of my favorite songs. Dead Set. Shine, Dead one of my set. favorite songs. Shine's my favorite song. Wow, Dead thank set. you. I wrote that about my little brother. Really? Live Again. Wow, beautiful. One of my favorite. Angel Sun. Wow. These songs are, are, are so amazing. Um, what was it like going from, from this to this? You know, I don't know how to, to, to word it. No right. one's ever I mean, asked me that question. Before. I mean, these, these lyrics are so, the, you're so melodic and it's... I think I wanted to be more of a singer. It shows. I think, I was, I think that we were uh, maturing as a band. Uh, yeah, for sure. At Animosity, we were maturing as a band. We were able to bring in another producer that we felt Ben was incredible to work with too, as well as Toby. Toby was awesome to work so with. So everybody was on the same page, like, we, oh, yeah. we, we need to grow and make make these this kind of album. Oh, or oh, yeah. was it like you're in the studio and you're and it just kind of happened that it way? It kind of happened, because you think about this. This, this was, was your longest album, wasn't it? Like, yeah. It took you the longest yeah, to make it, Yeah, this was a right? crazy time, man. We were living there. A lot of crazy things are going on, but uh, what an experience. We uh, You can imagine Seven Dust moving into a condo. And these people thinking, oh, I just bought this beautiful four-bedroom condo with my family. And then all of a sudden, Seven Dust moving upstairs from you, the band. So and at that time, it was, you know, we were coming in late and, <laughs> you know, doing music and, you know, yeah. upstairs singing. I'm like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. This is where they put us at. But, wow, <laughs> man, this is a, 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 what a great time and a lot of great songs. Angel Song was on that. Yeah. And, and that, that, that song... Uh, that was written for um, Lynn, Lynn Strait. But I actually recorded Angel's Son in uh, Phoenix. And I didn't have lyrics for it. We only had the chorus. Me and Clint had the chorus. And I was like, I remember being on the tour bus. Chaney was with us. On that bus, when I did that recording that morning, and I was so nervous. And I was like, I don't have any lyrics. I don't, I'd never dealt with a friend dying mm -hmm. or being killed or the way he went. So mm -hmm. I couldn't. I couldn't write anything about it. I said, I don't know what to do. And uh, we went in that studio, and I remember all the lights were down, and Mikey was there. And I could see those guys uh, from the, the, the control room. And they said, what you got? And I said, I don't have anything. And I said, just play the song. Play the song. I don't know what I'm going to do. And I promise you to this day that he had to be there with me, and, and the Lord or whoever was there, because when that song came on, up until I sang the first word, I did not know what I was going to sing. Really? Not a clue. Life is changing. That hits you spontaneously? I can't go on without you. Hit me. Rearranging. I will be strong. Second verse. Well, had nothing. And it came to me just like that. And not a lot of times songs happen that way, but that was something that was very special. And it was in the moment, and it was kept because mm -hmm. it was the realest as you can get. You know, I, like I said, I, I didn't know what to write about with someone dying before. So those were all feelings that were just straight from here. You know, like with everything that we write. Wow. But that was to me the most profound of. I didn't know. I really felt like I was going to let everyone down because I had nothing, nothing at all. Have you ever had that experience again since then? Sometimes, but yeah. not not like that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Not just, I think everything was the way it happened, the way he died, and us being on the road at the time that was going on, and for us all of a sudden to get thrown into the studio and write this song. Nothing ever, no, no nothing ever like that has ever happened. I love now. the way that all fell into place when you guys had straight up the album, mm -hmm. and everybody uh, the, the video. That was so good. Yeah, you know, that that was a, a that was another strange day, man. Uh, that video was on the beach. It was beautiful, and I remember seeing this house, and you couldn't use the toilet in the house. You couldn't go. You couldn't go all. You couldn't do everything you wanted to do, but the video was done behind the house. And this is something for everyone out there. If you've never seen it, if you look at that Angel Sun video, the same house is from Christina Aguilera, Genie, Genie in a Bottle. She rented this house out too. So <laughs> I think that's like kind of a, who owns that house. I don't know. Some lady. <laughs> Some lady that said some tape on the toilet. I yeah. remember taking it off and using the bathroom. But uh, yeah, that was a very, it was cool that everyone showed up to be a part of that. And you felt how much love that young man had. That uh, still to this day, I can't believe he, he went away so soon, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's still something that I think that uh, people deal with, you know. But me personally, you know, I still, you know, when I lost my little brother, I still feel like, wow, I can't believe that happened to me until it happened. So I understand, you know. Yeah. Sorry's not enough.
mm-hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah. That's what a lot of times I feel. But that song turned out to be something beautiful that uh, still to this day, people gravitate to it and say, you know, hey, I still get text or emails about someone, my so-and-so passed away and I played Angel Son at the funeral. Wow. And, you know, I'm like, wow, that's a... Uh, you guys that's... always play it live too, right? That's... No, not always. Not always? Okay. Uh, we haven't played it in a while, but oh, wow. sometimes we'll bring it back out, man. Very, very important song, man. I think uh, it, it, it can go across to anyone that's ever lost anyone, you know mm. what I mean? So... Great. Um, this next album, I absolutely love. Seasons. Oh yeah, Butch Walker, Ruby Red Studios. Bam. Bam. That was an experience with Butch Walker. Which before we did this, <laughs> we worked with Butch at his parents' house at the studio. Okay. And we did our EPK. Was that what you call it? EPK. Yeah. Yeah. Back then, at our first, we started with Butch, man. And for me, and for us, I, for me, honestly, to work with Butch was like. The best thing ever because not only was he a guitar player, he was a singer. You know what I mean? He yeah. he was he guitar brought, player, and, and then all it was in Atlanta, <laughs> and we were right around the corner from Roussons at awesome. Ruby Red Studios, where he he was at the time when we were there. He was building the top uh, loft or whatever it turned out to be that beautiful house that he sold to uh, who he sell it to the rapper. <laughs> he sold it to the rapper, uh, some famous rapper. He ended up selling Ruby Red Studios, I think. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm gonna have to look it up. Yeah, you have to look it up. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? I keep talking. I'm, 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 I'm sorry if you guys don't know, but there's other people here. Uh, <laughs> I can't remember anyone. But that was a great experience. But to to have Butch Walker come in and and sing, and his energy was always good too, yeah. man. And he had songs. These songs know? are so good. And everything from Marvelous, whatever, to any band that he's been in, mm-hmm. uh, South Gang, even. You know, Butch has always been incredible. I, man, I like, love these songs, man. Like yeah. Gone and. Suffocate, oh, Gone burned out. My favorite skeleton song, Disgrace. Oh, man, they're so good. Broken Down. I, I, I Disease, wish Disease. Enemy. I would... So I'll tell you something. I don't know if anyone knows about this, but at the time, Butch was on MTV. He had just done, what was it, Mayfield? Marvelous. Marvelous Slurry. Yeah. And they had the big song, Fall to the Ground. Oh, no, no, no. That was no, our no, song. No, um... no. Make <laughs> me a promise. That Stop song? this before we begin. So check this out. <laughs> Hit. Yeah, MTV, yeah. TRL, all that. We went in. So enemy. Now think about this. When you fall to the ground <laughs> and finally get back to reality. It was yeah. the same type of. So I felt like Butch, all he was able to do, what he did was he that. brought that energy that he had already had into Seven Dust. And it wasn't the same, but it was similar. Yeah. I never compared yeah. those two. That's but think wild. about it now. Yeah. And while he, he really put, he, he put, what I think, he put his stamp mm-hmm. on what Seven Dust was doing at that point in time in that album. And man, it was, it was really cool. And that's, we still play Enemy to this day. I wish you guys would do like Burned Out, uh, all yep. these good, like Rain, dude. Uh, and Don't know that song. Don't remember Rain. Down, it's like, down to my lesson. Oh my God, it's a great song. Yeah. Why do you? Yeah. I don't remember it now. <laughs> yeah, man. All these songs, man. You know what? After someone said something today, I was like, how many songs do you guys have? I was like, I think I, I went to a jukebox and it was like a hundred and something songs. Yeah, it's crazy. So when it's time to do a, you know, like a, a show, how do you pick? It's like, you know, some of these songs on here, we've had, we didn't play mm-hmm. ever. And that's another thing that the music industry, I, the one thing, you know what, I don't like about it at times is other than people like us that get it, that get, we want to like every one of these songs. A lot of people out there only hear that song that was on the radio and don't know anything else about all that work that was done for so long and your heart and soul have been put into it and those songs kind of disappear unless you have the true family and friends and I don't like to say fans but people that really get deep into the album you know what I mean those yeah. songs are gone like until you said rain and you sang it to me yeah I was like oh that nice, was a huh? great song you like that I love that you know what I mean I'm like wow yeah. we should put that back in a set that no one amazing. would know it yeah. except for those hardcore fans but a lot of times I'm like man you should we should put all our best stuff on that album because you know you can only probably go two or three deep mm-hmm. and then what happens after you know it's gone but, uh, you know, at the end of the day, I guess they're, they're still there. Those songs are there and they can always be brought out. But that's something that's always been my it's, downfall with the industry. You only, and this get, is this, you only get this much. Uh, yeah. You only get that. You only get those two songs 
And if you but don't you know guys the band, got face to face on that. Face, oh my god, that song. We still play that song. It yeah. was great. So that this album went deep. But you was know, was TVT pressuring you guys to make like these kind of songs that would be like one radio? Of those three? Yeah, radio. Oh no, no, not at all. I think they let us do what we wanted to do. Really? I just think we were growing as a band. Uh, mm-hmm. That oh wow, that picture. I remember going to a photo shoot somewhere here in Atlanta, and it was an old burned down uh, double decker that used to be some. Restaurant that used to take people around on a double decker. Well, this oh, that's cool. This is amazing right here. The different, like, I, what I love about this album, and this is the last one we probably told with, with Clint. This is the last one with Clint. Right? Oh, really? Yeah, he got you guys were on tour around December, and he kind of is that when he left? Yeah, he left and then went to do went uh, Dark New Day, Dark New Day, yeah, which is a very weird period for us, man. It was like, uh, we I felt like I lost my brother. For a while, but I feel like with anything, um, people have to go down their avenues and figure out what they're doing in life. Mm-hmm. And I think that was a point in his life where he needed to, he's got so much music in him. And still to this day, he has tons of music in him. Looking back in hindsight, you can see all that now. Oh, right? yeah, you see it yeah. all now. But then uh, it was probably real confusing. But, you know, there was a lot of bad, you know, there was a lot of weird things going on, you know. not. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, but I do remember always, well, at one point in time, seeing that video one night, the brother, brother song. Brother, yeah. I was like, damn it. I like it. And it was Clint and it was his brother. And I was mad about it, but I was happy that it was with Corey again. Mm -hmm. And so I couldn't be too jealous, but I was still envious of just that was, you know, that was our guy. And uh, it was a few years we didn't talk, man, until we ran into each other again. And it was like a very crazy. You guys in a studio or something? And you had to see. You know about this? Yeah. My wife was there. Well, she was my girlfriend at the time, and <laughs> we were rehearsing. And Clint was in the studio it's in RTM, where we all rehearsed at. And I'm like, oh, great. I hadn't seen him. I love him, but what's it gonna be like when we run into each other again after this? After doing all this, and then not seeing him, and he's in another band. There's no way I'm gonna see him. This place is a hundred rooms, and every God has a plan with everything, and I think it's all planned. And sure enough. I'm walking down that hallway and I could see the end of it. It's a million miles. And I'm walking and I'm like, he's not going to come out. And sure enough, he came out of the side. Ah! <laughs> and we ran into each other and we cried, man. That was the first time oh, we saw each other. It was like a very uh, emotional time to be apart, but to still know that by looking at him, mm-hmm. that we want to do this again. And, oh, you, you can know, tell. Oh, yeah, we could completely tell. And that's when it kind of happened. You know, he came back in not too long after that. But, but but before he came back in, you guys picked up Sonny. Yeah, Sonny Mayo. Boom. Yeah, which is Sonny. Nice. Sonny was cool. Sonny was cool to play with. Uh, whoa, there he is. Ball head and all. Uh, I love that video, Ugly. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. That You're was kryptonite. That was, <laughs> I, I remember that. We did that in L.A. It was so funny. I remember that. That was last, all at night, right? Yeah, that last scene was like 5 o'clock in the morning, and they put <laughs> me in that it? bed, and the, the, the hotel sign was... Going off, we've been filming all day long, and I remember actually falling asleep and them having to wake me up. And I, was like, <laughs> I was like, "Oh my God, is it over finally?" That was a great time. Sunny was Sunny was cool, man, because you know, think about this. Think about having like a new girlfriend in the band. Yeah, that's what Sunny was. He was, you know, really excited, brought an energy to the band that I felt like. After, and you guys didn't have trials. So it was just we, you yeah, we do. Uh, Sunny, we yeah, we love Sonny. we love Sunny from Snot, you know, and mm-hmm. knowing his plane and. And he he was really good. It was a, it was a good time to have him in the band, man. He was a, it was fun. That was a weird time for us too, man. Just this know? life, man. I love that song. Is that um? What, talk about this life, John. Was that, that was John. John. Yeah, John, John wrote okay. this. Yeah, about his first daughter. Okay, I was yeah. thinking it was about your daughter. But no, no, that was, was John. John. Yeah, that was John's daughter that he wrote that about. What what was the difference between going songs like Season working with Butch and to doing this without TVT, right? So now you don't have. We own our. This is us now. That's you guys now, yeah, and you we, don't have such a, a songwriter guy working with you now. Yeah, you know what, man? I, we've never had a problem with with writing the songs. It's just like when we brought. We'll, we'll talk about this later. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I think it's good to have someone police something that's going on, and that's kind of what we did. You know, we we felt like that uh, we needed this. We needed. We, we wanted Butch to work with Butch. We wanted to do this by ourselves because now it's Seven Brothers, and we kind of got a range. Everybody's pretty much a producer and a songwriter in the band, and we kind of know what we want, and uh, we were able to do it. I thought this album was a good one too, man. I had That's a good. I had a good time on next. Uh, what was it like not having Clint there next to you? I mean, you just... that that was weird. That 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 took me a while to get used to. 
and uh, it, yeah, it was weird. You think about it because that was my that's my singing guy. You know, mm -hmm. he's my 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 background. My I, I feel like we were like Daryl Hall and John Oakes at the time. You know, I mean, you know what I mean, cool. like in a weird way, but yeah, like Black Jovi. That's an inside <laughs> joke. Uh, that was my singing partner, man, and uh, my 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 guy. But it was it was an experience to do this because I I, I felt strong that that wasn't going to be the reason that Seven Dust didn't continue to go on. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be that, you know, we have a, 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 I feel like we have a destiny to continue to do music because there's so many people out there that enjoy and have grown up with what we've done and uh, I could never take this for granted. So we mm -hmm. had to keep going no matter what. Were you guys thinking about like, okay, for next we need to get more heavier or was it? I don't think we ever thought about that. I, me personally, I never think about that. I don't always want to be heavy. I like mm -hmm. to sing more, but uh, I like I like to let the album go to where it's going to go and not, you know, it depends. You know, sometimes you could have six songs that are the heaviest songs in the world. And by the time you get to the studio, you're not going to do those. Mm -hmm. You know, you get, it turns around to be slow. But I think, yeah, I think with Alpha... We wanted to make Alpha's, it heavier. Yeah, it was definitely heavier. Yeah, we did. We 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 wanted to make a mission to definitely shred heads and stuff. So yeah, that's definitely with <laughs> Alpha. And even with the artwork, you can kind of tell that it's even yeah. a heavier, darker thing. So yeah, that's that we were definitely going for a heavy, a heavier sound. Yeah, let's talk about it, man. That's cool. I'm trying to think, um, Death Star, Clueless. That's cool. Oh yeah, Suffer, oh these are all. Back to this 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 might have been us being angry too. Confessions of hatred. Aggression, burn, <laughs> alpha. We're like, yeah, we're the we're, we're the ones. Go everybody, go fuck yourself. No, uh, yeah, this was yeah. We wanted to make sure that this was a heavy album, man, and uh, I think we accomplished it on it. Wow, I've never seen this either. Driven is one of my favorite songs. Oh, that's good. Yeah, beg to differ was a great one. Confessions of hatred. Oh, I remember Confessions writing. Of hate, yeah, yeah, dude, what's I remember, up with that one. I remember writing that song in a uh, with Morgan. In a rented PT Cruiser mm. in front of the studios at Tree Sound Studios because we needed to go outside. And me and him went outside and wrote that wrote the the longest song in the history of Seven Dust. <laughs> that was kind of like a rap. Uh, it's like a poem. Like, yeah, really like you're kind of reading stuff. Guess what has never been played live? That song right there. <laughs> you, you, <laughs> we should, but yeah, it was you need a to great... do like an evening with Seven Dust. Yeah, that would be the one, man. Just open that. It was that. so cool. And there's 12 songs on this too. Yeah, wow. Now, who worked with us on this? It was Sean Grover. Yeah, Sean Grover. You guys made a DVD with him, like the making Sean of. Grove. I, don't, I haven't been. There he is. Haven't been able to talk about him. Uh, incredible person in the life of Seven Dust, as far as an engineer and to be able to, to work with him. Uh, his energy was always great, and I love working with Sean too. You ever and, talk to him anymore? You, you, you I hadn't talked him? to him in a few years. Uh, it's probably been about three or four years, but we get to see him every once in a while. Like, uh, uh, let's see what area that Baltimore area. I think he's living oh, out there cool. now. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that was uh, an experience, man. And and Sonny, thank you for everything that you did uh, when amazing, you were man. with us, man. Because you're still amazing, and I love him. I love him. I loved him being around. So funny. I just got a text. Uh, if you know, Sonny plays with Ugly Kid Joe. Yeah. Whitfield Crane. And every once in a while, like the other day, it was so weird. A week ago, I got a a random uh, video a voicemail from him, and he'll just be like, "Hey, man, how you doing, human being?" And he calls me human being. We're Does humans, it? yeah. And, how you doing? I just want to say hello to you and check on you and see where you're at. He might be on the side of a mountain in Tibet with a goat doing, <laughs> you know what I mean? Whitfield Crane is just so obscure and weird and, you know, cool. He'll yeah. just out of the blue, man. I just want to tell you I love you. And yeah, so it was, it was, that was really cool to have Sonny be able to, after doing this, to go and be an ugly kid, Joe, and to be with someone that was so cool. Dude, it's wild as Whitford, Whitford Crane was mm -hmm. uh, in Life of Agony. Yeah. And I saw Life of Agony open up for you guys, man. In the masquerade during your first album. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. Which, that was the first time I saw you guys. Really? Yeah, he was filling in on Life of Agony. He was. I remember the that. Yeah, yeah. And so, what do you think about them now? Life of Agony. Oh, Joey with Z Mina, with Mina. Yeah, yeah that's. Wow. I think that is such an interesting story. It is. Yeah. Um, I and follow. She's not a. It's not Keith. Yeah. <laughs> which but I, it's cool. I, 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 t I t tell you what, I have to take my hat off to you, Mina, for uh, being so uh, open and. And not being afraid of what people think and still doing your thing and, and still keeping it with Life of Agony. And Joey Z and him still rocking down with Absolutely. you and saying, guess what? No matter what, this is family. And, you know, uh, I, I think I, my hat is off. I love it. I think it's incredible. They're still putting out great music yeah. to this and day. Yeah, and still putting out great music. Yeah. I would love to see them again now. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So your next one is uh, Hope and Sorrow, which is your last one with Sonny. 
This album is so different from this album, from Alpha. I mean, you, and you said you guys don't even talk about direction. You guys yeah. just show up and Prodigal Son and Inside oh, and all so that. I, I don't know, but it seems like I might. we might be even close. It seems like when we did the Prodigal Son video, it might have been in this area at a church. Oh, was it? It looks familiar when I went across the railroad tracks over there. Yeah. And it's called Church Street over there. Maybe. Yes, it is. And I think we did that video right over there. Because right when we went to the little town, I was like, to Lisa, my (laughs) driver, my Uber driver, which is the best in the world. Anyway, so this album was definitely uh, very fun because Miles, Miles (laughs) Kennedy, which uh, everyone knows from uh, Alter Bridge, He's solo. Uh, he was in the movie Rockstar. He was. Everybody forgets. Oh my God, that's great. He's like, yeah. He's like, I'm a dude. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Miles, me and him never worked in the studio together on it. He, we sent it to him, oh, and okay. he sent it back, which was still incredible because I love his voice and we're buddies. But Chris Daughtry, yeah, American Idol, yeah, was on this. How'd and you this know is, that guy? Well, I'll tell you a story, man. Chris Daughtry was a fan of Seven Dust, and. It was weird because back back then you watched American Idol and you saw this kid and all of a sudden now he's on festivals with us. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe this was the first festival. And I remember someone uh, in my bunk said, hey man, this guy in the front lounge with his shirt off with some sunglasses on <laughs> that wants to see you. I'm like, what? I'm like, it's 8 o'clock in the way. He's like, it's Chris Daughtry. I'm like, what? I'm like, and we had, you know, kind of the social media thing and him talking about us. I'm like, I gotta go see this guy, man. And right after that, best buddies ever since, you know, we still talk and hang out. But he came into the studio at Tree Sound. Yeah. And I remember him saying, man, I love you, get, man. And he said, you mind if I come in the What was he vocal? doing eight, 8 in the morning with the shirt off? <laughs> Getting ready to rock. <laughs> Getting ready to rock. I don't That's know awesome. what time it was, but he's already, I went up in front, he had some mirror shades on. He's like, hey, what's up, man? Ah! <laughs> I'm like, hey, how you doing? Good morning. Yeah, we had a long night last night. What's up, brother? I'm getting ready to go on. And had so much energy, but how excited could he have not been yeah. all of a sudden after doing this American Idol thing? And now you're playing with Seven Dust and whatever other bands at that time were on these big festivals. You're doing it, man. Yeah. So it was very cool. And his energy was just on 10. I loved and fell in love with the guy, his energy. And he came in the studio, and I remember him saying, hey, man, you mind if I... Uh, come in the vocal booth with you while you sing that? I would love to see what you do. And I said, what? And he's like, yeah, so Chris Daughtry, while I was singing, this song was like this right here, beside me, watching. (laughs) Like that right there. So I had the the whole thing set up and Chris Daughtry was watching me like this right here. And to me, that was crazy and and, and, and it made me feel great and like, man, this, it wasn't, I got chill bones. It wasn't phony. It was just like a brother like saying, man, I love what you do, Scott. Mm-hmm. Can I sit beside you and see how you do it? And, you know, it meant a lot to me for him to be there and to do that. And, man, it turned out great. And we st- we're still buddies, man. We still talk and text and, and see each other when we can. But uh, this, yeah, this this was a great time. So, Sunny. Inside was one of my favorite songs. I lo- and I love it when you guys open your show with Inside. Yeah. That's that was a perfect great, intro. Yeah. The artwork was cool. I loved all this stuff, man. And and you guys were kind of, you, you were dealing with Sonny, but also you guys had Clint kind of yeah, communicating. Merging. Oh, so let's see. Prodigal Son. So all of a sudden. That's a great song. Thank man. you. I love that song. I remember writing that song in Douglasville on the back porch and uh, just feeling a certain kind of way. And those lyrics came to me that night. But anyway, Clint came back into the band. And did that video with us. Oh, yeah. Yeah, which I think is right around the corner from your house, as a matter of fact. That is so cool, yeah. So, yeah, I remember that. It was weird. Clint was back in the band all of a sudden. We were, like, excited, but still, like, oh, my God. I was there at the Best Buy thing. When yeah, when we there. signed the sign. Yeah, I was there. Think about that, man. All of a sudden, he's gone, and now he's, of course, we want him back, and then he's back. Mm-hmm. And it's like, where have you been? You've been in corn. You've been in Scandinavia. You've been like, everywhere. <laughs> been right? arrested, yeah, man. you've been arrested, tied to a floor. Yeah. <laughs> your, story, your music has been great that you had. and It was a learning process again. You know, it was, like, but it was never like, it was just like a brother that left for a while and just came back home. You know, like, awesome. It was like somebody that went to war. As well. I, I, I love like this album you guys did with them too, man. Um, and then Code Memory. Yes. So was that with Johnny K? John, Johnny K. All right, yeah, wow. You guys were, so uh, Chicago in the Haunted Brewery, which is great. Corey Lowry, which one, of the, one that hangs out with you a lot, was there. <laughs> we did vocals and we had our own setup and we really wrecked through it. And uh, for me, that was a, a great experience too, 
just to be able to be in Chicago and uh, to live with the band. That was like one of the first times we lived together and we all lived on the same floor, which was the weirdest thing because the studio was being <laughs> built and it was a big warehouse and we I all had the these, DVD. Yeah, we all had right. these makeshift beds yeah. and I had my cool chairs around my bed, but then there's Morgan right there. Like, well, talk about Vinny. <laughs> Vinny's smoking, right? He's Vinny's like, smoking right smoking. there. It's like, it's not a bedroom. It's like, <laughs> yeah. I had like a, I think I had a sectional thing that like maybe like was this big, but it was, you know, if someone farted, you could hear them. If someone had someone hanging out with them, you definitely knew that was hanging out. Uh. And in the morning at times, because the place is being built, I could wake up and there'll be a guy beside me sweeping the floor. Yeah. Because there was so much construction going on. But what an experience, man, to wake up every day and to be there. And it was freezing cold. Uh, we ate at this place called Kintones, which is right across the street. And it was funny because Patrick Swayze at the time was doing that TV show where I think oh, he was a cop. That was his last show. Yeah, his last show. Yeah. So he would be there a lot. You know, that was just the claim to fame there. But this was a, Johnny K was a, it was an experience. Uh, he works a little slower than you guys. <laughs> the, you guys are oh, like man. a faster pace. We, 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 seven us, we, if you're not going to get it done, we are. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, we, but Johnny was great to work with. But yeah, we like to go in and uh, we have a, a, a thing. Mm -hmm. We like to work 12 noon to 12 midnight. Sometimes it gets a little later. But uh, once we go into this mode, it's a, it's a, we have a, a we, we have, we know what we want to do. And, and I think Johnny was great and he policed it and helped us out. Corey Lau was there. It was a great time too. But yeah, and it's yeah. like Corey's back in the band now. So it's almost like. Yeah, he's well, got something to prove. I don't know. Like well, Clint, yeah, being Clint, back in the man, yeah, Clint, being I'm black sorry, in the man. Said yeah, he was there. Yeah, he came. He came full. He came in uh, hitting hard, and uh, we did it. But like I said, I think with any producer that works with us, if you don't know us, you're gonna figure out when we come in. Mm -hmm. We're gonna listen to what you gotta say, and we want you to help us. But we already, you know, we we know what's going on, and we're open to ideas. But if if you say it's kind of cool. And if we say if you like it, then we're gonna change it. You know what I mean? We're gonna we're gonna do yeah. at the end of the day what Absolutely. we want to do. You know what I mean? But uh, it was great working with the man. And, I love this album. It's, it's like besides unraveling. Oh, that's great. I love that song. What do you love? Um, I Karma. Love, uh, Karma's great. Right insane. Right insane. Oh, that's good. Wrote that. I wrote that song. Uh, Right in one of my motorcycles that I have that I call an experimental airplane because anytime I ride it, a little spit comes out of my mouth because it's so fast. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I, I wrote that song right in saying. My, um, Confessions and Here and Now. Oh, wow. Here and Now is an amazing song, dude. Thank you very much. Better Place. Better Place. Yeah, that's, that's good, that, that was one of my favorite, too. This was, man, you know. That's after, a great album. No one has ever done this with me like this before, and it's uh, it makes me realize how uh, how much I love this band. And uh, a lot of the things that we've done and a lot of the songs that we've put. Yeah, I like how you guys ended it with Strong on Broken. Yeah. That's a brutal song. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> a lot of, you know, what we like to do is try to, we try to try to keep it heavy and then try to let them know that we can sing too and, and actually go down a different avenue and not just be that band that's like, everybody's yeah. like that because I think things change. Not everything is heavy. We're not mad, you know. We're mm -hmm. not always mad. We have beautiful kids. We have wives that are mad at us. Uh, no, not always, but you know, you, life changes. You know, we're Absolutely. not those kids that didn't have responsibilities and only maybe had an apartment, and, and now we have homes and and families and and things that uh, tug at our our hearts that make us write about. Yeah, I mean, our babies family growing yeah. up together. And, you know, you, you still got those guys that are you know out there with the hoodies on. They're like, man, what's that song about? I'm like, my, my kid is like, what the fuck's that for? You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> well, just because you don't have one, maybe you'll understand because it had to take me time to grow up to start writing about things mm -hmm. that happened to me in my life, you know? Absolutely. And I'm not afraid anymore. I'm not afraid, you know, uh, I'm not afraid not to be the heaviest man because I feel like we have a lot of heavy and I think it's time to write songs that, you know, uh, people can relate to and understand and, and not be afraid to, to make it pretty. I like to say that. And I don't have any problem with being pretty in the music industry when it comes to metal, too, because I think uh, music, uh, as long as you have conviction, people are going to understand it. Absolutely. You know what I mean? So the next one, Black Out the Sun. Oh, this is, I love this album. Talk about this record. I I love that Till Death. I, I love it, too. Clint Cold as War, I love. Oh, that's great. Black Out the Sun. What a great song mm, Clint wrote about good. his father. Uh, 
Nobody wants it. Dead roses decay. Dark AM. This was great. Murder Bar. This was uh, done in uh, Jersey where we did the last few albums. And I think the reason these albums came out, man, it was nothing else going on except the snow mm. and freezing cold weather. So we would go in the studio from 12 noon to 12 midnight and get down to it. And uh, I love this. This To me, this album was a lot different than anything that we've done. I don't know for what reason, but I look at these songs and I think about the music and I feel like this was a a definite different avenue that Seven Dust took with the heavy and the melodic, but we just did it in a different way. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I, I love it. It's a thank album. you. Uh, Black Out the Sun. I, I wanted to call it that, and it made it. This is one of my favorite albums right here. Very cool. Not Decay. Long. That was a good like open. Like, oh. that was your first single, right? Was it Decay? Actually, is that, that on here? Decay? No, I it was Decay. Never mind. Maybe that's all Decay, that yeah. Anyway, Decay wasn't that. gonna make the album. Decay was a song that was from a previous album. We just had the music and we brought it in and we're like me and Clint sat down and put something down and bam. <laughs> we're like, oh, that's the song. And it, it, it actually became a good single for us. Yeah. Do you guys see that? No, lot? Decay was on it. Yeah, it was the last song that we wrote though. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it was the last song we put on this whole album. It was like, hey, let's see what that song sounds like, because we threw it away a long time ago. And I think sometimes a lot of things like that happen with bands, mm -hmm. you know, those songs that you don't think that people would understand are the ones that they're going to understand the most because we're our own worst critics mm -hmm. when it comes to music. It's like, ah, it sucks, or, you know. It's like, no, you know what? Sometimes that first thing that you do is the best thing Absolutely. because you're not thinking about it. You're just letting it flow. And you're not going back and saying, let's change this or change this. You just let it go. And that's what I like to do with music. Got a Feeling, one of my favorite songs. That's a good one. Murder Bar. It's, uh, and you guys always close the albums out really good. Yeah, Murder Bar was a bar across the street from our hotel that was a house, a three-level house. And it didn't look like a place that was very inviting that you would want to go to. And Wolfie Van Halen was with us <laughs> doing this album oh, cool. and was staying at the hotel and kind of doing some hanging out with us. And uh, I remember getting back from the studio one night. And we were like, man, we're getting ready to go across the street to that bar. And he's like, but didn't so-and-so say you get murdered if you go there? And I was like, oh, yeah, that's the murder ball. Let's go. <laughs> and so that's what we called it. And no one ever got murdered, but it just looked like <laughs> the place that you wouldn't want to go to. But it's right across the street. Burger King, this place. And I think this place, that place actually, for me, helped with this album. You know what I mean? It was yeah. a place you went to, and it was all regulars there. Like, what was this? Guy, what was this at? Was this uh, Butler, New Jersey? Okay. I remember one guy that was the local janitor <laughs> at the school, the elementary. But all the kid, all the people that were our age knew him from when he was the janitor when they were kids <laughs> in the seventh grade. He didn't talk to anybody, but he would talk to me. He would sit at the end of the bar. Carl, I remember his name. And Carl was a weird guy. Yeah. And you're like, eh, mm -mm. and I do remember when some people would come in, and be like, oh man, you're hanging out with Carl. And I knew if they were a bad kid, because he would be like, and I knew, I was like, oh, <laughs> you gave Carl a hard time in school. I knew it. But you know what? <laughs> just stories like that, you know what I mean? Just made different. You could tell that this community was tight knit, and we were going to the murder bar, and Carl, the old janitor, would be there, and these kids would love us and be like, oh man, Carl, hey man, what's up? <laughs> I'm like, all right, I ain't talking to you. <laughs> Carl don't like you. And then sometimes you would kind of say, yeah, I remember that kid. That was a good kid. And what, what a, you know. You need to write a song about Carl. Yeah. Even though, you know, we've had a lot of crazy stuff going on in our careers, man. Things like this and to talk about this reminds me of uh, the reason I love what I do. And to uh, these songs all mean something, man. Everything means something, you know. So this, right after this, you got to Kill the Fall. Yes. I love the album cover. Oh, you know what I wanted to do it's with so that, cool. man? I loved it. I, I, I like that Mastodon, the colors, and I said, you know, what about the days when we like to wear the t-shirts that were vivid mm -hmm. and that, you know, made a statement? Let's try to get an artist that could bring something back like that out. And this was something that was able to be done, man. I thought it was cool. I would like to continue to go with those type of things. You remember the, uh, the old Fillmore posters and stuff, mm -hmm. uh, that type of stuff that... Yeah. Uh, uh, vaudeville posters that, that I would like to start bringing that back in. I'm, I call myself a mantiker mm -hmm. and I like old things, but I like to bring that type of stuff back into this thing. And I think we did a great job with that artwork when the, the gentleman that did it. But Kill the it's, Fall was great. Thank you. Can you believe it? Great song. Grammy nominated. We were there at the Grammys. Couldn't <laughs> believe it. Spent a zillion dollars. <laughs> Instead of taking a limousine, Walked across the street because my hotel, my buddy James Shields, one of my best friends, a uh, pitcher now for the uh, the Cubs. Anyway, uh, 
the White Sox, I'm sorry, he's with the White Sox now, got me and my wife and our family a hotel right across the street from the Grammys. And so we had everybody meet us at our hotel. We're going to walk across <laughs> the street. We don't need to take the limo. Let's walk. It's right there. <laughs> well, you don't realize that the red carpet is about 16 miles long. Uh, <laughs> and after, at one point, I think my wife took her heels off. And I was like, are you fucking kidding me? This is happening right now. The wives couldn't make it. We're sweating. And we finally make it. And now we're getting ready to go into like where the area is at to, to do all the, the interviews and stuff. And right before we went in, it was so cool. Common, the rapper, yeah. I met him. I met him with Whitney Houston years ago on a plane going to Australia. So anytime I see him, I'm like, hey, what's up, man? <laughs> and sure enough, going to the red carpet, Common's walking by and we make eye contact. He's like, hey. And we do this and we hug each other and he meets my wife and we're on the red carpet. I'm like, wow, chill bumps. What are the chances of uh, us being here together as a family and a band? And a lot of people think, oh, the Grammys, oh, guess what? I'll take that home. The nomination, as long as I live, I couldn't believe that I was there. And I could actually, Man. if I wanted to, he wouldn't have seen it. I could have threw a spitball at Stevie Wonder because he was right there. And as a kid, watching the Grammys growing up and then all of a sudden seeing Stevie Wonder, this guy, this guy, uh, Adele performing as far as you are, and I'm sitting right here, like this right here, like, you know, what an experience to have my wife be there, my daughter be across mm. the street and, and have the people that I felt my closest friends, the Dixons and uh, the Shields were with us, to experience it together and to make that feat as a band, uh, I thought it was, the best. it was so unreal, man, just that whole night. And it was weird because during the day, a lot of people don't, you know, see what happens is you, they do the awards all day long and then at the night you get the whole the Lady Gaga's and mm -hmm. the Justin Timberlake's or whatever you want to call them. Uh, so we're there all day long dressed up in the suits <laughs> like, man, I didn't have to wear this. <laughs> we're there all day long. I mean, we're going through the gospel. The hillbilly. Yeah. I mean, every genre of music. They don't that, film all that. You, oh, like you don't say yeah, it's being filmed, but you, get you don't the, see that on television. Yeah. So we're there in this whole different section. Like it's not even where the Grammys are at. The Grammys are at the Staples Center. This is at a whole nother, big hall. And I remember just being there, thinking, maybe, maybe we have a chance, or maybe we. What do we? No, we don't have a chance for this. Why? What are we even doing here? And uh, they said Seven Dust, and you could hear our song play. And then they said Ghost, the band, in October or somebody else, or somebody else, something like that. And when they said the band Ghost, <laughs> we already knew something was, something was, they already had to know because they kind of walked in from out of nowhere with Dave Grohl. Oh. I'm like, what? That's weird. But I do remember, I don't know if, I don't know if it was on film or camera, but when they said Ghost, I was like, ah! <laughs> Congratulations! <laughs> and it turned out to be the singer Tobias is one of my buddies, the nicest guy. You don't ever. want to be caught on camera when they show yeah, you. I'm like, going, oh. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, I got my wife in the headlocks. Like, I knew it. No, <laughs> no, but you know what, man? It was still an experience, and I remember my wife being like, Ah, I can't believe it. But still, for us to be there, the 58th Grammys, man. Like, now it's only the 60th. To mm. me, that was a, you know, just to be that. That's so to, cool. You know, I'm, so, I'm like, hey, man, you can put a fork in me, I'm done. But hopefully on this new album that we're doing. That I think yeah, we're look, about, we got to talk about the new album. That uh, we would get another Grammy nomination. Yeah. So the new album, we don't Absolutely. have a name for it. Just finished recording my last vocal last night. John Conley still has maybe four or five guitars mm. to do. Just a little hit ends there. Clint Lowry has maybe, I don't know if he's done with his vocal uh, melodies, uh, like uh, a few harmonies with me, and maybe a couple of solos that'll be turned in, but within the next few days. So last night after I sang, this is definitely uh, the first time I've ever talked about. That's nice, you were just singing yesterday. Just last night. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, and was just at the studio. Walking out this morning at seven o'clock, thinking, "Wow, we've done so much in 33 days uh, recording this than I've ever done in my life." I sang 14 songs in nine days yeah. to uh, to make up for some time that was lost, but it was because I felt good too. So some days I did two songs a day, and uh, it was it was an experience working with Elvis and Jeff was a. Uh, for me, you know, not to take anything from any other producer, if you see this out there, 
But for me, it was the best experience in my life. Maybe it be due to me being older and more seasoned with what's going on. But the work, uh, the way that he worked and uh, the things that he knows about music was completely different than I've never seen anyone do before. Like I, I said earlier to you, just talking off camera, I've never seen anyone listen to from the guitar to the bass to the vocals and everything going on and be able to hear, go back to that. That's not right with everything going on, being so focused, you know what I mean? That's what Elvis, and I guess he's been doing it, he's, he's been doing it for a while. He's got a lot of albums out there that are going platinum, so I, I guess that, you know, due to that, but uh, what, an, what an experience. It was the first band that he's ever had live in his house. <laughs> so uh, it was really cool, and he and we've been wanting to do this. For Is he giving you guys room service, and you're living in his house? Oh, right? no, no, not room service, but we, <laughs> we, would, uh, we definitely did a lot of bad eating. Uh, <laughs> We did a lot of bad eating, uh, but that was funny. But we had a great time, man. We'd get up at 12, hit the studio and work all night long, and then be able to wake up at the house. I put my feet in the pool. I remember saying, oh, this is going to be awesome to use this pool every day in the hot tub. <laughs> I put my feet in one night the first week we were there, and the, other than that, I would only sit out there to, to look at it because I was so, when I'm in the studio mode, I am only in that. And everyone knows me. I find one place to go to, and luckily enough, Elvis's house was here, and if you walk one block away, there was a place called Yellow Dog Eats, and there was this hippie, like a hippie restaurant where everything is a barbecue, but everything is all infused with crazy <laughs> stuff, and only sell beer and wine, and they had a VW bus in the back that you could sit in, and so that was my <laughs> spot that and I would go to, and you know that's just my thing. If I'm in a studio, I'm either in that studio or at Yellow Dog Eats for just enough to get the food to go and have a beer. And then go back. I don't like to go out. <laughs> when you're in the studio. in the studio, do you call it, do you still call it the zone? The zone? Oh yeah, the zone. <laughs> Hell, it's definitely the zone, man. That's what it is. It's the zone. And if I leave the zone, I feel weird. I feel like I gotta go back. I like when Vinny said, "Who's in the zone?" Yeah, yeah. You gotta go back and reboot because now I've been out. I'm a civilian. <laughs> I gotta get back. You know what I mean? So right. for me, it's just it's a, a, a work a mindset of just being there and being in that moment and, and keeping that for whatever reason for me keeping that vibe and that feeling is uh, important to me not to stray away. Even one night, me and Clinton Morgan went out and saw Thrice. Oh, yeah, it's a great band. And Circa. I don't know them. What was an incredible show. We went to the House of Blues, and that was our, one of our first nights going out, man. We had a good time, but we couldn't wait to get back. I remember <laughs> me and Clinton looking at each other, like, you ready to go? I'm like, <laughs> yeah, let's get out of here. <laughs> let's get back. But, you know, that, that was a good night to get away and to hear a band that we loved and to go back and I think it might have even been some inspiration for us too. When you guys are writing for this album, do you guys write like John Collin, do you guys write a ton of music and just oh kind of narrow it down? I think Elvis had 60 songs. 67 of songs? That's amazing. Music. And uh, yeah. like I said, when we came here with Corey, we wrote three or four songs that are on the album, which is great. Uh, yeah, we, 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 we write. So like John would sit home and Clint... We'll send stuff in and, you know, his tracks or whatever. And he, if he had an idea, you can try mm -hmm. this, LJ, or you put something on this. And I was able to, I got a little studio at my house now. And so I was able to do stuff at my house and work with another guy that I don't know if you guys, Josh Barber, that is uh, one of Tech Nine's engineers oh, right cool. now. That's worked with Norma Jean and oh, yeah, all the big great. bands. Yeah. yeah and uh, this guy's a, uh, a great guitar player and a friend of mine that I work and do vocals with too. So we had a lot of... We had a lot of uh, a cool energy going into this album, man. Uh, we don't know the name of it yet, which I think that'll happen yeah. in the next few weeks. We've talked and thrown names around, but we don't know the single either because we just stopped recording last night the vocals. So I think that's a, a work in progress, you know, what, what what's going to hit us. And after you hear it all... I can't wait to hear it all. And I'll tell you what, man, just with what I'm hearing now, and it's all dry. Last night I was listening to stuff and I was like, so you're going to... Put the fancy sauce on my voice. <laughs> He's like, "Yeah, it's gonna sound a lot better." Me and John are like, "It's it's perfect." But Elvis did tell me, "Say, like, man, I would love to record you straight to tape because he said that uh, the tune was great. He didn't have to really do anything to to." So it was it was for me. I, I felt stronger as a singer. He made me a better singer working with. I was him. gonna ask you, is that intimidating? Because he's worked with Miles Kennedy. You're like, he's a. I love Miles, and you're an amazing singer it, too. So is it like a, it was a little, He's worked with. Well, the you best know what made it intimidating? All the guys said, "Oh man, you're gonna be under the microscope. <laughs> you're gonna be under the microscope." But when me and him got in there, man, it was like he looked over at me one time and said, "This is what I'm talking 
talking about. This is what I've been wanting to do. And that for me was enough. You didn't have to tell me that you like my singing anymore. Just for him to say that, let me know that he was, you know, he, he admired what I was doing and he said it every day, man. And how cool would, would it be to hear it from someone that's done so well and, you know, made so many bands and wrote so many songs that have made bands to this day, people still remember their songs because, you know, he had a part of it. And it was a pleasure to have him be a part of it. And uh, I liked the way that he would sit back and I would notice that he would just be watching us, like seeing how we worked, like not saying anything, but watching. <laughs> and he said, it's a crazy, he said, I've never worked with a band like this. He said, you guys are all doing something. Everyone sings and everyone's writing and everyone's giving each other ideas. And he said, he would just sit back and come in when he felt like he needed to. Like at the end of the day, like you said, if it's there and it's not there, he said, I'll give you an idea. I'll let you run with it. But if at the end of the day you don't have it, then I'll give you something. Mm. But it wasn't ever really like that. It was always like, hey, you like this? Or it was a, a working thing. It was a, a partnership, man. That's awesome. It was very cool. And I hated leaving the house. And I can't wait to do another album with him. And I would like to do it even longer than 33 days. Okay, my last question. Is this over? No, my last question is this. You need to do a solo thing. Man. Okay, yeah. What's I, going on? I kind of started. Love and, uh, song. Yeah, I, yeah, that was a great song. I think it's great. Uh, for me, that's a scary thing because Seven Dust is my thing. And I know people do their things and it's always something I want to do, but I don't ever want it to be like, I, I, I expect people to think that I want, I expect it to be as big as Seven Dust. So that's why I kind of put it on iTunes and just... You know, my friends and hey, you guys can hear it. But in the future, I would definitely like to do a, a solo album. Would you ever write a book or anything like that? That'd be cool. Yeah, I don't know, though. I, uh, I, you know, that's something I've always thought about, too. Uh, I definitely have the stories. You know, I, I would like to share my experience. I don't want to think that I'm the guy that needs to write. You know what I mean? I don't want to be that yeah. guy. To me, that's like, yeah, I'm going to write a book. But I feel like I have enough stories that I would love to share with people in it. any type of way. It may not be a book or video, but you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I would love to share some of the things that we've gone through, uh, uh, it, it, even if it could help the band stay together and to, to learn how to... to Like a motivational. Almost, yeah, right? you know what I mean? Yeah. Not, not, not to take everything... Uh, never to take anything for granted, mm -hmm. but to always know that... Uh, you never know what tomorrow is promised to you. And uh, just for me to even be sitting here with you right now is uh, something that I think is incredible. And uh, it's a way and what you're doing is something that's very cool that I'm not, I've not seen anyone do to, have, Thank you. to be so passionate about music and to bring people in to talk about it. You don't have to do that. Thanks. You know, I think that uh, good company should be something that everyone should see on television. And maybe one day it could be something that's on, like, Channel 5, Channel MTV, <laughs> guess what, 8 o'clock tonight, guess what we'll be watching, Good, Good company. company, what you talking about? <laughs> All right, now that I said that, I want to be a part of that, give me like 3%, I don't know, <laughs> or give me one of these albums. Do you ever like do a pan where people, I, I don't know if you'll keep this on, but you guys, if you were here, imagine going into a hard rock <laughs> casino in Las Vegas, but better. <laughs> is what the downstairs of this house is like. It's is a amazing. Don't touch it, anything. Don't touch it. And not only is it rock, it's Michael Jackson. Well, that's rock too. But Daryl Hall and John Oates. Joan Osborne. I mean, Boys Sean M Mullins. I loved him. Uh, wow. Oh, yeah. Did you know him too? Yeah. Beastie Boys. I mean, every genre of music is in here that you've tapped against, man. I mean, uh, this has been an incredible experience for me, man. I would hope to do this again and, uh, you know, come back and come back again. Thank you, maybe, brother. Being maybe here. let me come back and be a, time. an assistant host to somebody that you're. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah. That would be awesome. Right on. And it's a pleasure to meet you, gentlemen, too. Uh, I don't. You guys can't see them, but his crew here. Ultimately, these guys are great, man. It's a family affair right here, right now. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Thank brother. You. Wow, wow, wow. Awesome. <laughs> Give me love. Give me peace. Keep that fight inside of me. Cause I said. I said so Give me choice Give me grief Keep me close to my enemies Of course I said so Of course I said